Let's kick it! Hi, this is Lisa Jacobson from the DailyMigraine.com, and I'm kicking it with Dari. Welcome to the Kicking It with Dari show. This is Dari Allen Nieves. On today's show, I'm going to be talking with Lisa Jacobson about migraine headaches. Lisa Jacobson is a chronic migraine sufferer who has had over 9,000 migraines during the past 28 years. As an accomplished entrepreneur, she always wanted to use her expert business skills to help solve a social issue. In 2014, when her migraines were at their worst, she founded the Daily Migraine as that passion project, a place to give a voice to people with migraines through help, hope, healing, and humor. Today, her 300,000 followers are the largest group of migraine sufferers anywhere in the world. Migraines continue to have the stigma of being just a headache. Funding for research is appallingly low. Fewer than 500 doctors in the U.S. have sought to get credentialed in the field. With the DailyMigraine.com, Lisa aims to change all of that. She educates and motivates others with migraines to help make the change as a group and ultimately use their support, their money, and their votes to find a cure. Currently, Lisa is in migraine remission. Her highly engaging Facebook Live sessions on various migraine topics typically attract over 15,000 viewers. She has become a sought-after patient advocate and speaker on the national stage in the field of migraine. Lisa sits on the board of the American Migraine Foundation and volunteers her time to work with biotech companies, the FDA, and other groups, as well as small migraine research and support groups all over the world. And now I'd like to welcome to the show, Lisa Jacobson. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you, Doreen. I'm so glad to have you here talking about something that we've never talked about before on this show. And probably it's because I really don't know much about migraines. I'm probably in the minority on this, but I don't think I've ever had a migraine headache. And so I'm not, you know, the typical person I've heard of them, but I really am interested in this niche focus that you have on migraine headaches and I think that it'll be helpful for people like me that maybe aren't really aware of how serious an issue this is to educate them and get them more involved and just be aware of certain things because they might have children or family members that suffer the way that you have. I'm really glad you brought that up. And that's really great because there's a real stigma against migraine and even someone like you who's so open about it. How would you ever know, you know, what the difference is between a headache or a migraine? I mean, most people don't know, so you're not in the minority in that way. A migraine is a neurological disease. It is the third most common disease in all of diseases, and it's the sixth most disabling. So it's really, really common. 37 million Americans have it, and a billion people around the world get migraines. So it's very common. But the reason there's no cure and there are very few treatments and there's very little attention given to it in terms of research funding is that there's a stigma that a migraine is, quote, just a headache. For people who have gotten headaches, you probably have had a headache in your life, you know, from any illness or flu or whatever. A headache is an annoyance. It's a discomfort. But it's nothing like a migraine. People who have migraine are exquisitely sensitive to light to sound, to smells, to motion. And so those of us who get it, let me describe it this way. Let's say so many of your listeners probably have chronic back pain or chronic, you know, shoulder pain or something. Now imagine that you had that times 10 every day in your brain and you couldn't even think, you couldn't talk straight, you were dizzy, you had a lot of people get stroke-like symptoms where they get paralyzed on one side. Head pain is actually only one of the many symptoms of it. And the problem is that it is very, very debilitating. So every second of every day is spent avoiding the sun, avoiding the light, the heat, certain foods, you know, all these things that trigger it. And you have to get stuff done. You have to raise your kids. You have to go to work and make a living. And so to be able to do that when you have this excruciating head pain is near impossible. And then the double whammy is that There you are suffering like there's no tomorrow and the rest of the world thinks you just have a headache and you're exaggerating, lazy, or, and that's what the real 
challenge and uh, and what's interesting about migraines is that it's a real disease and a very debilitating one, but the rest of the world doesn't think that there's anything wrong with you. Yeah, so we're definitely going to educate people on this show today, um, myself included. So yeah, that's really important. It's not just a headache. What causes migraines? I've heard of a lot of people that when they talk about them, they talk about maybe, you know, they have seasonal allergies, it gets worse then, changes in the barometric pressure, like during a storm. There's various different things that can trigger it. So talk about your story and, you know, what triggers it for you and what you know as, you know, an expert on this topic. Yeah, they don't know as a whole what causes migraines. There used to be a theory that it was your blood vessels expanding and dilating and then contracting and that would cause pain. It's somewhat of like an electrical storm in your brain. Again, believe it or not, there's only $15 million a year from the NIH in research in the U.S. for 37 million people. And so, you know, again, we don't get money because people think it's a headache. We don't get doctors going into it because they don't take it seriously either. So believe it or not, there's a, there are about 500 credentialed migraine doctors in the U.S., which is one for every 6,500 migraine sufferers. So I think it's probably surprising for your listeners to realize that it seems so common, but there's so little done for it. So we don't know what causes it. We do know that there's a big genetic component for most people, not for everyone, but for most people, it runs in families. And we know that if you have migraine disease, there is no cure, but you can learn to manage it. So you have to avoid your, quote, triggers like you bring up. The problem is it's hard to know what your triggers are, and some people have many triggers. So my triggers, for instance, are heat and glare. So I cannot go outside when it's over 75 without a hat and sunglasses and layers on, or I will get a migraine in probably like 10 seconds. And then there are people who have certain foods. Probably you've heard this with like wine, aged cheese, hot dogs, MSG. And then there are weird ones like avocados, citrus fruits. Cigarette smoke is a trigger. Stress is a trigger. It's pretty much everything that is life (laughs) can be a trigger. The whole thing is really tough. I'll tell you my story because the reason I started the Daily Migraine, I've had over 9,000 migraines in my life. and What happened was when I was 29, I'm 58 now, but when I was 29, I had neck surgery. I had never even had a headache. And a month later, I started getting these debilitating, horrible migraines. Luckily, I was diagnosed pretty quickly, and luckily, I had some great doctors, but I suffered for 25 years, and uh, I didn't know another person who had migraines every day. So I decided about three years ago when my migraines weren't the worst that I was going to create something online, like a place to find people who had this and share ideas and thoughts. And it's been, like I said, three years, and it shows you that there's nothing out there. Literally, I have over 300,000 followers, and I post like eight or 10 times a day. I have the dailymigraine.com, which is a library of stuff all about migraine on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, but especially on Facebook and secondarily on Instagram. There's a giant community on Facebook. There's 260,000 people. They're from every corner of the world. It affects every kind of person. And they all have sort of gotten to know each other. And this week, I actually started a closed group on Facebook called the Daily Migraine Online Support Group. All you have to do is type it into the search and um, click join and I'll approve people. But I started it four days ago and there are already almost 1,000 people in it. And there you can ask all your questions of the other people. They're very supportive. I think that people with migraine don't have a voice. And so in the end, now it's three years later, I think what the Daily Migraine has done is given people with migraine a voice. It's the greatest number of people with migraine anywhere in the world in one place. So I'm really proud of it. I'm really happy. It's my passion project. I don't make money from it. And it's just my goal to help solve this issue of migraine and find a cure. For all of these thousands and thousands of people that are suffering, that are just getting brushed off, how do we start to tackle it? I mean, I'm sure that identifying your triggers that we mentioned is one thing, but you've got some other things up your sleeve. Tell us more about how we can help ourselves and each other with this migraine disease. Sure. Well, the first thing is to find a really good doctor. 
that's really important. Some people are going to their general doctors, which is okay if that person knows about headache. Headache is the category. I hate even calling it that. They need to change the name to migraine. But on the dailymigraine.com, there's a section where it says learn and there's a physician finder. And if you go on there, you can find a headache specialist. All They're mostly neurologists, only treat migraine all day long. And so those are the people who have seen it all. They know what's out there. They know what treatments are there. That is the first step. And it made all the difference for me once I started seeing, going to headache clinics and seeing migraine doctors. So number one is to go to the dailymigraine.com website and find a physician finder and find yourself somebody who is near you, hopefully. I have so much advice and most of it has been from reading the comments from the 300,000 people who are on the Daily Migraine. So another thing to do is a very, I'll give you the most important things. Number two is to plan. Planning is everything. So if you're home and you get a migraine, you usually have your stuff with you, but you don't want to be running out of medications. You don't want to be, you know, not have your ice. Ice usually feels great for most people on their head. You want to have your ice in the freezer. You know, you want to set it up so that you can be successful. And I think it's really important to get out of denial that you have a migraine disease. It's a disease and you have to treat it as such. And once you do that and you do self-care, which is really critical, it can make all the difference in the world. So when you're home, have everything ready. Have it where you need it for when you get an attack near your bed or whatever. One thing I did was I bought a really cheap freezer and I put it upstairs where my bedroom is. For years, I would get up in the middle of the night in a migraine crisis and I would bumble down the steps and come back up with ice pack and all the while feeling like I was going to vomit. Instead, I have a freezer right next to my bed and I just open the door and pull out the ice. You have to make it easy on yourself. And then secondarily, when you're out of the house, I always suggest, and people love this idea, having a migraine emergency kit, one that you create yourself. And I have one in my car and I have one in my office. And so what you do is you just take like a mesh bag or something and you put all the stuff that you need to have with you when you have a migraine attack because it comes on very quickly. You have extra meds. And these are just some things I have in mind, a little mini fan, peppermint uh, essential oil a lot of people use. You put it on your face and it sort of dulls the pain. Let's see what else. Some kind of food in case you're stuck with no food. Some people like to have ginger candy if they're sick. I said, uh, sunglasses, a bottle of water, whatever it is that you need. Someone told me, I love this idea. She carries like a bandana. And that way, when she goes through a department store or she's on a bus and somebody has a fragrance, it's overpowering. You just put it over your face and you avoid having an attack. So that's another thing. Number three, which is really, really big, is that many people, when it's out of control, go to the ER. And once you go to the emergency room, most people are treated like a uh, drug seeker, and that's because of the opioid issue. Is so many people who are addicted to opioids go to the ER, and they say they have a migraine. So when real people with real migraine go, they can't get any help, and it's really bad. So what I tell people to do in your migraine emergency kit is have their doctor write a letter that says, Lisa has been my patient for the last 10 years. She's a migraine sufferer. I told her that when it gets to this level to go to your ER, here are the kind of drugs I would like you to give her. Please also take her quickly and put her in a dark room with no sounds and no smells and a bucket for her to vomit. And you will get such different treatment by doing that. And my fourth thing is just to avoid in every way you can start weed whacking your stress and the negativity. So if there are people in your life who are negative, difficult, you got to do self-care. You got to get them out. You know, I mean, if it's your family, it's a little difficult, but I know with me, an example was I had teenagers and I was trying to solve all their problems and help them do it. And I realized I would just pick up their stress and get a migraine. So now they do it and I think they're better off for it. So that's yet another thing. And then I strongly recommend joining a support group because all you have to do is write a question hey guys, do you get migraine from barometric pressure when the weather changes? What do you do? And you'll have 50 people giving you great advice. So I really strongly suggest that they type into the search on Facebook, the Daily Migraine Online Support Group, or they can follow the Daily Migraine and type it in there on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And that way you don't feel alone anymore. 
And you can't believe that people are saying the same things that you felt for so long, but had nobody to talk to. So those are some pieces of advice that I have. That's really awesome. And you're right. When you are going through something, anything that is really stressful or that you feel like you can't get answers to, being able to talk to someone that has been through it or is going through it, it just makes a world of difference. I mean, people will ask, how do you deal with your boss or your job? A lot of people are out on disability and their family thinks that they're lazy, but they couldn't possibly function in an office with fluorescent lights and smells and noise. And so, and they want to be working. It's just really hard to be a, a public school teacher with little kids or work as a nurse. It's a rough environment for people with migraines. So this is a way you can just ask that question and people will give you advice. And, you know, everything else has support groups. But again, because migraine has such a stigma, there's just nothing out there for people with migraine. I would guess that it's also important that when you, whether you're talking to your doctor that is dealing with this, the neurologist or whoever is specializing in this, or you're talking to someone in the support group, that you are able to identify when it's happening, keeping track of when you have the episodes or what brings it on. Yes. So so that's a great, great point that I should have mentioned before, which is that you must track your migraines every day. And people say, well, why would I do that? I have them every day. So I'll just put a check in the box every day. But I've been tracking them for 28 years, every single day. And even though it's every day, you see slight variations. And I'll tell you something really interesting. I would have said to you, I have them every day. But two years ago, I think it was when I was at my worst, you know, I bring my, I always bring my tracker to my doctor and he took a look at it and he said, you know, you've had migraines this year for 361 days, but there are four days you didn't have migraines. And do you know when that was? I said, no. He said, take a look. It's when you were on vacation. I took a look. I got off the plane and the migraines went away and I got back on the plane to go home and they came back. And so that was an unbelievable clue. It started me in the process of getting better. And I'm actually now in remission, which I never thought I could be. And it's unrelated to the daily migraine. It's just that I never, ever, ever gave up. You know, hope is really important because whatever makes you better, it could be right around the corner. And I actually don't know what made me better. I did like 10 different things at the same time. I took certain medications that my doctor gave me that I hadn't tried. And I've tried many. I got a TMJ mouth guard which I didn't even think I had TMJ. I stopped eating processed food. I watched my triggers more. I reduced my stress. I got more exercise. I did this. I did that. The next thing. And I got better. And it was very bizarre because I've spent basically my entire life with a migraine. So you can never give up, but you have to track. And there's a great tracker online called Migraine Buddy. So if people like to use their phone, it's sometimes hard to use your phone when you have a migraine. So they can just go to thedailymigraine.com and there's a section called process. And I have all, I, I, I had a graphic designer make the forms that I had created look really good, but you can just download them or print them out and for free, of course, and use them and take them to the doctor. It's the way that I got organized and the way that I ultimately got better. So I strongly recommend people go to the website, thedailymigraine.com. And it's like a giant library of Congress for every <laughs> migraine. That's excellent. Your story and your struggle with it, and then your your resulting dedication to educating people and helping them continue, you know, despite the fact that you're in remission. I mean, you could have went into remission and said, okay, woof, that's behind me. Let me just go on with myself. But you have decided to take this on and be an advocate for the millions of migraine sufferers. And so for that, I commend you. I'm grateful and thankful and happy that you are in remission. But I also commend you for being a champion for others. Thank you. And you know, it's funny, I never thought I'd ever want to hear the word migraine again, if I ever got better. But <laughs> instead, it was the opposite. Now, I'd also like to mention um, about migraine funding. I mentioned a little before, I've asked people, and, and as I said, it's completely self-funded, the daily migraine. I pay for everything. I do everything. It, it's my love. I was trying to figure out next step, how to raise money to break the stigma and then be able to really get some research done to find a cure. So I thought about the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Can I think of anything that clever? And I was thinking and thinking and thinking, 
And I came up with this. Well, first of all, I asked people, please donate. And I gave, you know, some charities. Obviously, I don't have a charity, but I gave different charity names. And nobody gave anything. And I think that's pretty typical of any illness. So then I said, all right, how can I get people to donate? And then I realized, what if I create, since there's nothing out there, a very inexpensive item that will make people feel better, maybe not get rid of their migraine, but but dull it, and then use that money that I make and give it to charity for them. So I came up with this idea, and it's gone viral. It's a pretty incredible thing. It's called the Migraine Hat. And what it is, is I was thinking, you know, we're all, we all lie on ice packs, but the ice packs get warm and you're lying down in a dark room, sick as a dog, and they're wet. So I thought, what if you put them in a hat, like a black winter hat, you know, it's a plain hat. And so that's what I did. I designed it over eight months with some engineers and it's like soft, fleecy material. It's sort of like a rectangle. And what you do is you put it, it just attaches with Velcro to any size person's head from little child to giant person. And you quickly open it up and you pop a special ice pack in that has cryogel chambers. And you get two of those for $29.95 and a half. So what you do is, when you have a migraine and starting or anytime, you go to your freezer, you pop the ice into the hat, or it's, you leave it in there in the freezer. You put it on and suddenly it dulls your migraine. You know when you put ice on a wound, it like dulls it? That's what it does. So you put it on. It takes literally one second to do because you're so nauseous you can't do much else. And the ice is delicious. And you put the ice on, you put the hat on. And suddenly, if you had a migraine that was a 9 out of a 10 and you can't go to sleep because it hurts so much, it sort of numbs it down to a 7. And then suddenly, you can go to sleep. But the real benefit is if you have a 7, it can bring it down to a 5, which for most people with migraine, they know that. Five is like a bad headache, and we will take a bad headache in a second compared to a migraine. So what you do is you pop it on. Here, I'm going to show you what the Velcro sounds like. That's it. You put it on. I have it on my head now, and then that's it. I can stand up. I can walk around. I have a headache, but I don't have a terrible migraine, and I can put my kids on the bus. I can cook dinner. I can put my sunglasses on with it. I can put earplugs in with it. I've gone to the movies with it. I go to the gym with it. And uh, people say it's really changed their lives. And so basically, as I said, it's twenty nine ninety five. It's called the Migraine Hat. It comes with two ice packs and this really cozy Velcro. And you can keep switching out the ice packs so that you can wear it all day long and all night. And it's twenty nine ninety five. And every penny that I make goes to migraine awareness. And you can get on migrainehat.com or Amazon or thedailymigraine.com. You can pretty much find it anywhere. So that's my answer to uh, raising money for migraine. And if 300,000 people buy it, well, we'll have tons of money for a cure. So that's where I stand on that. That's awesome. That's really, (laughs) it's really ingenious. And it's like you said, there's all kinds of GoFundMe and stuff like that. So the fact that you were able to come up with a way that, you know, you can help yourself and help others and raise money I mean, like I said, my hat's off to you, (laughs) pun intended. (laughs) Please tell everyone where they can find you online. We know about the dailymigraine.com. You have a Facebook group called Daily Migraine. Where are you on social media as well? Yeah. So for people who have migraine or people who know people with migraine or people who love people with migraine, it's open to anyone. It's the dailymigraine.com is the website, obviously. The Daily Migraine on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. They're there uh, with hundreds of thousands of people. And then there's a special closed support group where nobody has to, nobody except the people in that group can see your questions. That's called the Daily Migraine online support group. And just type it into Facebook and search and uh, it comes up and you click join and I approve. And then, like I said, after four days, we already have a thousand people and they're asking amazing questions. So that's where you can find me and the Migraine Hat. You can find it on migrainehat.com. You can find it on the dailymigraine.com. It's right on the homepage. Or you can find it on Amazon. And it's called Migraine Hat $29.95. You get two ice packs and the, the really cozy, comfy hat. Plus, they have other things that you can buy as well that 
like a cooler so you can take it to the beach, to work, all over the place if you don't have a freezer. It's a really great thing and all the money I make goes to charity. So that's a double great thing. Absolutely. Well, Lisa, thank you for giving us so much information about migraine headaches and tips that people can use and share whether they are suffering with them or they know someone because everyone either is or knows someone that is. And so I thank you so much for giving up your time and for coming on the show today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for focusing on migraine. It really means a lot to all of us. Send your questions and comments about this show to kickinit at dereallen.com. That's K-I-C-K-I-N-I-T. There's no G at dereallen.com. Or you can use Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter to get to me at dereallen.com.